Well, Garrett, as the, the longest serving CEO in Irish provincial rugby, how different is the role that you have now compared to the one that you took on first in way back in 1999? I think our turnover in our final year accounts at the end of that year was about 490,000. I suppose if you compare that to today, um, our turnover over the last few years have been varying between 13 million and 15 million. Every day since has been a change in this business. So look, you can compare the day-to-day -day runnings and business, and business, but I think what happens on the field hasn't changed. It's the same thing. It's 15 against 15. I suppose since Munster last won the Heineken Cup as it was back in 2008, uh, most of the developments have been off the field. There's been the total redevelopment of Thomond Park. It's now a 26,000 capacity stadium. Uh, and the redevelopment of Musgrave Park here in Cork. The whole funding of Thoman Park, people must remember, we spent 39 million and when we opened the gates, we only owed 11 or 12 million, which I think is a phenomenal position to start that. In managing that debt, we've had great assistance from the IRFU and they've been very conscious of the way the economy and the has been because of the recession. I'm not phased really by the thing and haven't been. It has been a challenge. Our cash flow has been challenged at times, but um, I don't think it's any different than what's happening in businesses in Ireland. And uh, of course, Rugby in Cork, Musgrave Park as it was, has been redeveloped. It's now Irish Independent Park. What role will this ground play in the future of the professional game in Munster? It's really important that there is a rugby facility in a city the size of Cork. Um, the place that we'll play in professional rugby is to date we've been playing four games here and seven games, seven games in the Pro 12 in Limerick and obviously for purely on capacity basis we've been playing the European games in Thoman Park but it will play a huge part in it. The players have only played here I think three times so far and the reaction from them has been really positive. They like the whole concept of the people being near the pitch. It's seven years since Munster tasted European Cup success. What needs to happen for Munster to get back to the very top again? We've had a huge transition in our own team over a period of years and I think we've done really well to be competing up at that level. I would like to think we're in the upper curve of that uh, change in our team and in our squad. People need to realise as well there's been huge changes in Irish rugby. Um, the IRFU have managed the whole professional rugby area really well in my opinion. I think our top players and all our players are really paid on, a, on as a higher level as their competitors in Europe and elsewhere. You ask the question what do we have to do? We have to keep doing what we're doing better, produce better players ourselves and try and add that one or two top class non-Irish eligible player to our squad but I don't think we're as far off as people think we are. I know Francis Saeli is a player that you've been chasing for a long time. I suppose after we did a good bit of research, um, given that Doug Howlett himself is with us here and helped us because he's from Auckland as well. And from other contacts we had in New Zealand and a number of Skype and telephone interviews with, with Francis. He was happy that he could settle here, that his partner or any family could settle here and uh, it did take a period of time and there were a number of negotiations but I could honestly say they were about they weren't dominated by monetary issues and uh, I think he will be a great addition to the squad. In terms of player retention, Munster have been very successful in keeping you know, a lot of their um, experienced internationals. Will that become more difficult with the money in the game now in France? And how big a role, if any, will private investment play in keeping those players here? Look, holding on to players of that quality is always a challenge, it has been for the last number of years, it's more of a challenge now. If we want to hold on to these players, we're going to have to compete with them. Um, private investment can play a part in that. Without ownership of the entity for which owns Irish Rugby, it can play a part in it by way of player sponsorship and um, promotional deals and lots of things like that that are happening on an ongoing base and have been for years. But Private investment is the buzzword at the moment where people feel that there's just going to be money transferred from one individual to the other. It doesn't happen in that way. From a revenue and a taxation point of view, that's not anything that anyone would recommend. But um, getting the business community to help retain our players is something that is, in, I suppose, is in existence and I think will be part of the game in the future. Well, Gareth, great to catch up with you. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.